In this video, we're going to learn how to use the AGM-114 Hellfire Missile and the OH-58 Delta Kai Warrior. The footage used in this video is pre-release software and is intended for promotion and training purposes. Its visual and audio qualities may not represent the final product. Alright guys, welcome aboard the OH-58 Delta Kai Warrior from Polychop for DCS World. And we are on board this OH-58 with two missiles on the right side and we've got one gun on the left side. We're going to talk about how to get our HML or Hellfire Missile Launcher uh, set up to fire our AGM 114s. Now there is one switch that we need to have mapped. It is our weapon select switch. It's on the cyclic. You can find that as a four position switch. And in order to use this to activate weapons, you're actually going to select which side of the weapon system you're trying to interact with on. So if we wanted to activate the gun, we would flip that weapon select switch to the left. Uh, and if we want to activate the Hellfires, we switch it to the right. If we have the same weapon system on board, then it really doesn't matter. If we had two rocket pods or two missile launchers on either side, uh, we could flick it either way, and it's going to activate all of them together. And that'll make more sense when we shoot rockets. Now, note that the Hellfire launcher is on the right side. We typically do not fly with it on the left. In fact, the only time I ever flew with one on the left is when I also had one on the right side. Typically, you're going to have either a 50 cal or preferably a rocket pod on the left. Uh, and I say preferably because of weight issues. But the Hellfire uh, is heavy, about 100 pounds per missile. So having it on the right side helps with center of gravity because of the way that the aircraft is rigged for hovering and, and all that techno jargon that we're not going to dig too deep into. Uh, but let's go ahead and get set up. So the first thing we need to do is bring power to the system. We're going to go to master arm to standby. And that's going to allow us to do things that if you run into something on the weapons page that you're just, you're not understanding why it's giving you an error, just double check and make sure that you've got power applied. All right, so using that weapon select switch, we're going to click it up and that's going to take us to the weapon setup page. So we have to have that toggled because there's really no other way to get here, at least none that I can remember. Uh, you're going to see whatever weapon system you have on board, you're going to see different bits of data. Okay, so we've got this 50 cal uh, information here. We could change the rounds number, the uh, gun reticle offset. If we had rockets on board, we'd see some rocket data here. But up here at the top, across the board, is our Hellfire data. All right, so some of this, it's probably not in a great order as far as positioning. So we'll just kind of bounce around a little bit. It's telling us right now, because we have power applied, that we've, it knows that we have two missiles on board. And it's kind of defaulting here. So I'm going to just show you. I'm going to take us to standby. It doesn't know what we have on board. So I'll bring us back to standby. We've got two missiles on board. First thing we need to do is set our primary and alternate codes. Now this discussion can get a little bit deep into the weeds. Understand that all it's looking for is the letter designator. Those letters are then associated with numbers. Those numbers could be different. So what I mean by that is whatever we put in here for A, we've got to make sure the system knows what actual number that is and that that number is correct. We can't use the letter A when we're talking just to anybody. If a flight of A-10 showed up and wanted to know our laser code and we told them A, we would look ridiculous, okay? Because A is just a letter. They may have A and it's a completely different number. So all the system right now is looking for is which code set do we want to use? And that might be a better way of thinking about it. Which, which set of numbers are we looking for? So right now we're gonna just set A, enter, and then B, enter. And so now we've got these codes. If we wanted to change that, let's say that for whatever reason we were assigned to uh, Del uh, Charlie and Delta, change that we can see that our primary is Charlie and our alternate is Delta. All right, so after we complete that, we can go to the weapons bit setup page. We could run a Hellfire bit. In real life, we would hit that. It would take, uh, I don't even remember, like a minute or so. You could actually look outside, and you'd see the seeker head start kind of moving around, and looking around and stuff, and it was it was uh, checking itself out, and then you'd get the, uh, the message that the bit was complete. We don't have that option. Honestly, we don't need it. So over here, we're going to set missiles per code, and this is one of those that if you don't have power applied, it will get you. Another uh, thing that you should need to make sure is you don't actually have the missiles warmed up, and we'll talk about that here in a few minutes. But missiles per code, so how do we want to divvy up these two missiles? So we'll go missiles per code, and let's just say two and zero. So now we can see that what the system is going to do is going to default to running up both missiles to look for code Charlie. If we were flying with a wingman, and we thought that the chance existed that we were going to fire a missile on his code, we may put one and one. 
if we were going out heavy Hellfire Bird, we had four missiles on board, and the other guy was the primary looker, he was the primary guy lazing, we might go ahead and set his code as uh, having four missiles spun up. But the bottom line is, uh, this is where you're going to tell it which code's the favor. All right, coming out of the setup and back to the weapons page, toggle missile code, it just does exactly what it sounds like. It's just toggling what our primary and alternate is. Electronic counter countermeasure on off uh, is not working, at least in this build, and honestly, it probably doesn't have any bearing in DCS world. De-ice, that was a system where they had basically covers over the missile heads to keep them uh, from getting damaged with, in cold weather, and this would blow that cover off. I've never actually seen it. Uh, it was not something that was very standard, but it was a system that existed, so we don't need to worry about that either. All right, so from right there, from the right seat standpoint, we've got our missile set up. We're going to use that weapon select switch, and we're going to go over to the right and bring us to the weapons page, and we'll just briefly look at it, but we're not going to play with it right now. We'll talk about it more once we get into our battle position, but it's a lot like our VSD flight page. It's giving us a lot of the same data. It's giving us our waypoint. It's giving us our constraints. All right, so normal or override, so it's going to override those safety constraints. Our launch, we're going to toggle this later to normal, uh, and that's going to allow the aircraft to start spinning these missiles up. As you can see right here, we've got code Charlie, because we put both of them on Charlie and nothing on Delta. It doesn't have that in as a standby. But once we start warming these missiles up, you're going to see that change to a Charlie, and it's going to let us know that a missile's ready to go. Our delivery mode, so lock on before launch, lock on after launch direct, low al low and low al high so these have more to do with obstacles in your way and there's some jibber jabber about okay if it's set to this then the missile is going to climb at this rate and it's going to clear this sort of obstacle at this much distance i wouldn't worry too much about that typically in the dcs environment we're going to be shooting either low ball or you could just go direct on that low al all right so from a weapon setup standpoint before we take off the right seat is good, so we're going to jump over to the left seat and look at a couple things that we need to do there. Now, it's important to understand that with the Kaiba Warrior, shooting a Hellfire is very much a two-person job. You do not have the ability to control the laser at all from the right seat. We don't have the ability to move the mass mounted sight. We don't have the ability to laze. Now, there are some workarounds that Polychop has created to allow the single player to have that sort of experience, and the AI is one of those. And if you haven't seen the AI video, I'm purposely going to post it before this so that people have an understanding of how the AI works. But if you don't, I would go over there and watch that video because we will be using it. Uh, but the things that we need to do to set up for the left side is, of course, just our normal MMS setup. I want to reiterate, if I did cover it in that video, I can't even remember at this point, is checking out our laser code. So here's this button, laser code list. So we're going to press that, and this is what I was talking about. Alpha is alpha. It's just a letter until we put a number associated with it. So 1688 is our actual alpha code. If somebody else shows up and they're saying alpha, they may be on 1111 or any other number of combination of numbers. All right, so we are set up for code Charlie, 1666, right? That's what we have our missiles spooled up or they will be spooling up. We can see that Charlie over there. So we're going to come out of that code list just by pressing that button again. We can see right now that our laser is set to alpha. We're going to need to rotate that. Now, if you cold start this aircraft, it may say range. Let me rotate it until it says range. It may just say this, RNG. That means that the laser is not even operating as a designator. If you press the uh, f laser fire switch at this point, all it's going to do is give you some numbers, uh, but it's not designating a target for you. So you just need to rotate, hit this button until you get to the code that you want. Charlie, and we did confirm it was 1666. So it's good that that number's there, because again, you might need to confirm somebody with what your actual laser code is. Whereas if you remember in the Apache, you kind of kind of dig down into a couple pages to find this number. It's going to show that number for you uh, for a little bit and then disappear. But you can always pull that back up by very quickly hitting this laser code list and figuring out what you have. All right, so at this point, we are basically ready to go. Our MMS is fired up. Uh, we've got our laser on standby because we're still sitting in the far. So we're going to fly out to our battle position and get set up to engage targets. All right, guys. So funny story. After creating the first part of this video, a new build came out. There were some issues, particularly with the uh, the flight model hovering and with Hellfires. 
So I waited to finish the rest of this video. So the second half of this video is a little bit different, or I should say from a different build than the first. So there's going to be some differences. One being that I've got four Hellfires on board. Uh, otherwise, we're just going to kind of continue on and talk about actually launching the Hellfire. So let me head on up here to our battle position. We've got some targets set up here on the Cola map, and then we'll get to uh, pop and targets. All right, so I'm going to use the AI menu and start uh, slowing us down, get us ready to engage targets. And in the meantime, I'm going to go ahead and bring power to the system like we've just talked about. And I'm going to bring up the MMS, or I'm sorry, the weapons page. And we've got four Hellfires on board. I'm going to go to weapon setup, missiles per code. Now, we can only set three missiles for our primary code. So I'm going to put three and then one. We've got that alpha and bravo. Let me get uh, right, us to hovering here. Up a stable hover. Back to weapons page. Okay, we are good. Three missiles on alpha, one on bravo. So we're going to kind of break this up and talk about the weapon systems from each seat. So I'm going to bring up the weapon sparse VSD by pressing left or right on my weapon select switch. We can see that we've got four missiles on board. Alpha and Bravo are our codes. We can see we're in constraints normal. We want to leave that. We don't want to override that. Launch mode is going to default to standby. So we're going to press that not once but twice and take us into norm. What that's going to do is it's going to allow the system to decide which missiles it should shoot first. And it wants to shoot the inboards first. The reason being is that in the real aircraft, if you were to jettison the Hellfire missile launcher and you had already fired the outboard missile, then the inboard missile might strike the skid and cause some damage. We don't want to play with that, so we always basically shot off of norm. If you went to manual, you would allow the missile step switch to, to rotate through those missiles. We're not going to do that. You may have noticed also Ripple. This is going to change the code. We'll talk about that in a later video series. I don't want to tackle that right now, but that's essentially allowing us to swap but between our laser code and our wingman's laser code. We'll talk about that another time. All right, so once again, back to normal, and we can see that it's selecting the missiles. It's getting them spooled up, and it's going to spool up three of them, and we've got three on Alpha and one on Bravo. Lowball is our preferred, or I should say our default delivery method, lock on before launch. And we can see that we've got roughly 40 degree uh, constraints box here. And then as we rotate through, it's going to give us a message if we do it, but we're going to rotate through direct, low, and high. Okay, it didn't give us a range because of uh, probably because of our nav range. Uh, these are the different types of lock on after launches. And we'll talk about that here at the, uh, the last part of this engagement uh, tutorial. But we're going to talk lowball first. So some things that we're going to look at right here, we can see that diamond moving. That is the MMS. So I'm going to bring up the MMS. I'm just kind of using the cursor so we can actually see where the MMS is looking. And as the pilot, if I know that the left seater is getting ready to tell me to shoot something and I can see that the MMS is way over here, then I need to start bringing in some pedal and start bringing the aircraft around so that that MMS is inside the box. All right, just help him out. Don't wait for him to tell you. All right, so we're going to go ahead and arm the system and the laser is armed we're on alpha code i'm gonna squirt the laser there it is all right and we should get it's probably because i'm got it pointed somewhere worse all right we should get that little x to appear and what we want is that x to move in coincidence with the mms i'm kind of moving the mms around so the laser is kind of doing its own thing but let's just get it lined up on a target on the lmc and go to manual mode all right so we've got our target there I'm going to squirt the laser. We can see that X is in coincidence with the MMS. That means that the seeker head is actually looking in the right spot. If that X appeared over here or over here, that would tell us that the seeker is actually picking up either someone else's laser code. Maybe it's a reflection of our code, but it is not going to the right place. We can see the missiles are tracking. We've got this missile selected alpha code. It's ready to go. It's tracking. We could fire right now and hit that target. We can see here it's telling us it's an 11 second time of flight. And the range is 3,334, and that's a laser range. All right, so remember that says L. Later, we're going to see an N. All right, so let's jump over to the left seat and look at what we're looking at over there. All right, so in the left seat, we have got our cursor uh, on the target. We can go to point track if we want. We don't need to. We're set on alpha code. And once again, just lasing. We're getting that 3335 for the range. It's flashing, meaning that I am lasing. We're in point track, but essentially you can see that once again, the missile is ready to go. As soon as I start squirting the laser, we get that solid box. The missile is tracking and we can fire. Now I've got it set up so I can do both things from both seats. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, fire from this seat. And when I pull the trigger, there's going to be a delay. It's going to be an uncomfortable delay and that's pretty realistic. 
and it should fire the missile right here next to me which is pretty awesome stuff when the missile directly next to you shoots off at uh, I think it was 800 pounds of thrust all right so we're lazing we've got a solid track we've got a solid box I'm gonna tell you when I pull the trigger and then you can see that delay so I'm pulling the trigger now there's the missile launch all right so it's arcing up it's tracking that laser and there's our target we see the aircraft is automatically spooled up the next missile and it's ready to shoot all right so low balls are pretty easy again it's just point and click just find something make sure that the aircraft is lined up with the MMS fire the laser and then fire the missile now we're gonna talk about how to use lock on after launch Now, lock on after launch allows us some different options let's say that this guy had some sort of laser detection capability. We may not want to squirt the laser on him for 11 seconds. We may want to squirt it uh, at the last second, get that missile going towards him, and then start shooting the laser. All right, so that could be an option. Additionally, what we may need to do is just launch the missile over some terrain because we've got another element that's spotting for us. It could be even a fixed wing aircraft overhead. It could be a UAV, something like that. So what we're going to do is set up a low owl, but we've got to know where to throw the missile. So think of it that way. You're, you're playing football. you got to know where the guy is so you can throw it at him. And that's what we're going to do right now. So the first thing I'm going to do is create a target. Now, I could get this target via the radio. Somebody could send it to me and I could build it. And we've covered that in previous videos. But I'm just going to create this target myself. So the first thing I'm going to do is press the target locate switch. And I'm going to fire and hold down the laser for about four to five seconds and we're gonna get this message store or reject 99 tango I'm gonna hit store and now we've created a target on that guy we're gonna to go to the HSD I'm gonna to go to nav setup target list previous page that takes me to the end of the list and there's 99 tango and that is the grid for that target so we've created a point a known point in the aircraft system and what we're going to do is point the aircraft at it and be able to use that as a lock on after launch. So looking over here on the right side, I'm going to go ahead and switch us to low owl. And now we're getting this message, minimum hellfire range. And that has to do with the fact that it doesn't really know where we're trying to shoot this missile. And it's just letting us know that this is a minimum range. And as we rotate through, it's trying to go off of some data that it's got. We, it's not the right data. We, we want to go to low owl direct. And what we're going to do, let me act that off is we're going to set this up as our fly to waypoint. So let me go to HSD. I'm going to go direct point. I'm going to go 99 Tango. Enter. Store. Now let's look over. I'll jump into the uh, right seat. Now we can see that there's a box that appeared that says DIR. That's our direct fly to waypoint, and that's letting us know where we need to orient the aircraft. We can also see that we've got a solid box on our low owl box because we're inside constraints. I'm gonna tell, I wanna say Jester, I'm gonna tell the AI to kinda move us a little bit to the right. All right, so we are now oriented outside of constraints. We're not pointing at our target, we're not in that 10 degree constraints, and so we've got a broken box. So now I'm gonna do is orient him either by telling him to turn, or I could probably use that turn to MMS heading, but I'm just going to tell him to turn. I'm just going to give him some corrections. And once he gets in that constraints box, now we are in constraints. We could be sitting behind this terrain, have no visibility whatsoever to that target. All we're doing is orienting the aircraft to throw a missile towards a point in space that we've programmed by using the navigation system. So at this point, we can see that our range to target is a nav range. We can see N. 2,913, and it's a nine-second time of flight. Well, let's see if there's something a little bit further out there and we can play around with. Let me jump back over to the other seat. All right, we've got another guy out here. So we're going to do this at combat speed. Target locate. Lays and hold. Target store at 98 Tango. Store it. I'm going to go to HSD. Nav setup. Target list. I'm just going to verify that that's in there. 98 Tango. HSD. I'm going to hit return route and then go direct route so I can type that in. 98 Tango. Enter. Store. Now we're up direct to 98 Tango. 
we need to come a little bit to the left to get it in constraints. There, we're in constraints. Let's take a look over at the right side. Now it is a 12 second time of flight and the range to target, nav range, is 3,714. So at this point, I'm gonna go back to MMS. I'm ready to shoot the laser. I'm gonna fire the missile and I'm not gonna shoot the laser until that time of flight says uh, about eight seconds. All right, so we're ready to go with the MMS. Just kind of keep an eye over there. All right, firing the missile. All right. There's eight seconds. I'm lazing. And we can see that we got a solid box because the next missile is ready to go. And it's got a low ball. And there's the impact. Now, one thing to remember, you can see we had four missiles. Three of them are coded alpha. The other guy is at Bravo. All right, so we've only got one more missile on alpha. We could go into the weapons page and reset that up. We'll talk about that here in a minute. But otherwise, I'm going to take off. And we're going to do a running Hellfire engagement, and it will be finished. Now, a running Hellfire engagement is exactly what it sounds like. The aircraft is going to continue forward, or at least continue motion. I'm going to switch us back to low ball. The MMS is fixed forward, so once I get it lined back up to the target area, I'm going to go ahead and turn on the Roger autopilot, that. the AI autopilot. Jump into the left seat. So we've already got a missile ready. Just find a target. Same thing that we've been doing. I'm gonna acquire that target, put a point track on him if I like. I'm gonna laze. I'm gonna make sure that we're in range. We are in range. I'm gonna tell the other guy to fire. He's gonna fire. Missiles away. And target destroyed. Now, as I was saying, we've already shot all of our alpha coded missiles. What we can do very quickly is we'll go to weapons setup page, toggle missile code. You can see that that toggled Bravo and Alpha into those two different positions. So I go back to my weapons page, and now I've got a missile set up on Alpha. All right, guys, Hellfires are secretly easy. Just make sure that you got the right code set up. Make sure you've got the right delivery mode established and that it works for the situation that you're in. Otherwise, just basically make sure the aircraft is pointing in the right direction and make sure that you get the laser squirt on target for a period of time that allows the missile to track. Usually about seven or eight seconds will get you where you need to be. Thanks a lot to everyone who watches these videos. I hope you guys are enjoying the series of the tutorials. Really looking forward to the release of the Kiowa. I think you guys are going to have a lot of fun. And a big thank you, as always, to Patreon and YouTube members for supporting the channel and keeping me going. We'll talk to you guys on the next one. Take it easy.